Engineers Australia's response to mascot towers. Let's have a look. Good evening, everyone. I'm Florian Heiser, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my Stein of coffee, and I thought we would have a look at Engineers Australia's statement regarding mascot towers, how they're addressing it, because this is uh, in the news a fair bit at the moment. So let's have a look at how they're responding. So Engineers Australia statement regarding mascot towers. Now Engineers Australia is a national organization that represents engineers. It provides some registration levels, I understand. And um, I, you know, kind of like their version of the Institute of Architects really. Professional body that lobbies and represents for the engineering profession. So. The mascot towers situation is further evidence that we need changes in the building and construction sector. The evacuation of Opal Tower was a major wake up call for New South Wales to get serious about reform. It is time to finally implement the changes agreed by COAG in response to its inquiry into regulation of the sector. Now, part of that was in this report, the Shergold Weir report, and there's 24 recommendations and we'll have a look at them. And of those recommendations, none of them have been implemented and it's years old. So whenever the Premier of New South Wales is going on about how we'll do everything for the residents, I get cynical. So while it's too early to know the root cause of the mascot tower's failure, the COAG report recommendations offer a program of comprehensive reform that will deliver confidence back to the sector. The New South Wales Coalition committed to public consultation on implementing the COAG report recommendations, including an engineering registration scheme within six months of the March election. Now, notice how they say an engineering registration scheme. I did, I've actually, this is my second video I did tonight. The first one, I looked at an interview from the president of the Building Designers Institute of Australia on Sky News. And unfortunately, none of the audio from the interview actually came through. But in it, he's also talking about registration of building professionals. There's two things that everyone talks about. It's registration of building professionals, often from organizations that would directly benefit from registration of these professionals, and yearly inspections of the structures. Okay? Now, I'm cynical of the yearly inspections because we already have yearly inspections for fire services and equipment. Recent multi-res building we worked on, multi-story, we only discovered that a lot of the fire detection equipment wasn't working or wasn't plugged into anything when we did our construction work. They had yearly inspections, they passed. Uh, you've got yearly inspections where, you know, fire issues are still happening in buildings, they're not being addressed. So the inspections without action are pointless. And a structural engineer walking through a building, what are they going to be able to see? I think we need to look back a lot earlier. We need to look at the procurement of our buildings. I did a video on this yesterday about how buildings are procured. We need to look at our building certifiers, our building surveys, their code of conduct and how they are hamstrung by conflicts of interest and overstepping their responsibility in some regards. We need to look at just our professionals the challenges you have, you know, working today, where demands, 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 oh, the, the quality wasn't enough, this, 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 and, and yet you're getting squeezed everywhere in the process. And we have to look at the people who are actually the ones shifting responsibility around and who are mitigating risk and putting it onto other parties. Anyway, so as the national, as, as the national professional body for engineering, Engineers Australia has offered to help the government with this work. New South Wales has been slow, but it's not too late if we start now. Well, no, it is too late. It is too late because you've got two buildings that have failed in some regards and people can't live in them. It shouldn't take a crisis for government to act in the interest of community safety and consumer protection. Yeah, that's a good point, but sadly, I think that's, that's what always happens. So... If you look here, these are the 24 report recommendations and I went through it before and I'll, I'll go through it in greater detail again, but uh, in, in another video, but recommendation one is registration of building practitioners. And, and uh, that's what, you know, 
they want to register the engineers and building institute also want to register practitioners now i've got an issue with this i'm a registered architect in queensland why would you have an issue with it florian because it doesn't work all the time now here we've got also calls for a code of conduct for building surveyors and the integrity of pi private building surveyors. Now, building surveyor is another term for building certifier. Now, I had a drunken discussion with a building certifier here in Queensland because under the Building Act, where they are given their authority, they can only a few people can actually produce documents that they, the building certifier or survey, is allowed to approve for construction. Those are an architect, registered architect. A building designer, and you know you can have an open building designer that can do anything, a medium density, low density, an engineer, or a an engineer, sorry, that's registered, or a builder that's actually building the project that they're working on. So they're the four people that can do it. No one else can. No one else can. But what I have in my discussions with the building survey over a few drinks was I was getting frustrated. That he, because there's provision under the Building Act here in Queensland to allow him to s nominate a person as being suitably qualified so they can overrule any of the registration process themselves under this Act, or they believe they can and they have, to render it null and void and say, yep, that, that drawing produced by that interior designer is, a, I'll stamp it, it's, I consider it appropriate, done. So, what's the point? What's the point in implementing this legislation when the building certifies are getting around it and do you think a building certifier sure who's gone to uni but do you think they have the same capabilities as the professional bodies that register people as the institute of architects as the board of Ar sorry as the board of architects or the other bodies that want to register people master builders you know what do you have to go through to get your building license or your engineer's degree so that's why i'm cynical for this registration of building practitioners. I think unless other things are addressed, and particularly certifiers, we need to look at our procurement processes, we need to look at a whole lot of things, and I'll go through this in greater detail, or I would steer you towards the, my seven-part series on the Shergold Beer Report. You can listen to it like a podcast. I go through every single thing, and it's exhausting. But, you know, like here, this one is really simple. A dictionary of terminology. We don't even have consistent terms in our different states. That's an important one. Building product safety. We've got dodgy cladding. You know, there's asbestos in chip rock. You've got fire wiring that can catch fire. You've got developers. This happened here in Brisbane, where a developer had a showroom with nice tapware, all set up, beautiful. Then they went over to China. They got them copied. They had their architect a tick that they looked the same. And they put them in now the problem is there's certain requirements that need to be met for tapware with regards to water usage with regards to ensuring that it's not leaking or causing mold or water damage and water is a very dangerous thing in buildings it can cause health issues it can cause a lot of structural issues yep but they did it they signed off on it big brand name beautiful high-end developer well-known architectural practice i couldn't believe it when they did that when i heard of that i could not believe it here a building manual for commercial buildings that's a good one too because right now whenever you want to get anything about a building it should be in the manual it's always lost we need to start putting that on blockchain even the council stuff needs to start going on blockchain i think inspection and certification of fire safety systems now this the installation sorry this is important too because what you can do is you can have it designed 100 percent well with all your your stamped and registered pra building practitioners that are paying all their cbd points to these organizations that are pushing for it that are talking to government to implement these processes you have all that done perfectly but then when it's not installed correctly when the yearly inspection of the um you know fire for fire safety doesn't detect that the um fire separation between different compartments is compromised because the penetrations haven't been um, protected sufficiently because they wouldn't detect it all the time they wouldn't be able to see it because the people installing these fire safety systems it's not done properly it's not inspected here are mandatory inspections we don't have mandatory inspections so yeah guys let me know what you think do you think the engineers response is good am i too cynical with my criticisms that everyone thinks that registration is going to be the best thing in the world because i mean frankly the opal engineers were registered i guarantee you the architects working on this were registered if not in this state 
in another state. Well, they'd have to be actually New South Wales. And I bet you the engineers who worked on not this building, but on Mascot, Mascot were registered in other states. Anyway, guys, please like, share and subscribe. Ding the bell to see my daily updates. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye for now.